I'm in a park, again, same park if you've seen some of my other videos, and uh, we're in St. John, Washington today. I'm here with Chris and Michael Reichman, and we are going around the Palouse, taking some photographs, testing out some new cameras, and basically having uh, a good time together. A few minutes ago, we only had some vagrant lying on the ground here. Now we have kids in the background. Seems like every park draws this. And we're actually in the Palouse having fun photographing with the new Sony cameras and a bunch of other things. But what I wanted to do today is show you a new camera. Uh, a number of new cameras have come out recently. But this is a camera that I kind of enjoy because it's a small camera and it actually is in my pocket. And this is it. This is the DxO1 uh, from the company we all know, DxO. And they've uh, gone ahead and made a camera. You can use the camera as is. It's uh, very simple. You have one side which is a connector for your iPhone. You have the front lens hiding behind a little uh, safety shield. You've got a little LCD screen which is uh, touchable and you can navigate through the little different menus. You've got a little trap door here where you have a micro SD card and a USB charging point as well as a, a data point. This does not have any kind of plug-in battery so you have to charge this. It has an internal battery only so it has to be charged. Um, I have yet to uh, uncharge it but then you don't take that many pictures with it. But it's really clever so let's take a look at how this ca little camera works. It can work as a camera all by itself if you slide this down but as you slide it down it pops out a lightning connector. Now I could take a picture just like this but I just can't see what I'm taking a picture of. So I'm taking pictures now. It's pretty cool. But it's meant to hook into your iPhone through a lightning connector like this and now you have a viewfinder. And you can see that the viewfinder pops up and whatever I rotate around to it allows you to rotate around and basically have a pretty cool viewfinder. You have all the capabilities that you'd expect from a normal camera. Uh, aperture priority, uh, T for shutter priority, um, P for uh, basically programmable or professional, as some people would call. And essentially you just push the button on the top, it auto-focuses, and you take pictures. It's pretty simple. It also does uh, a video. It has ISO settings. It has um, raw file settings, and it has what's called a super raw file. Super raw file is very cool, especially at high ISOs and low light conditions. It takes a sequence of four images and combines those together into a super raw file and actually gets rid of noise. It's pretty neat the way it works. But it is all touch sensitive. I can just pick out here and I can select here, select the raw file that I want. And I can decide whether I want to use self timer and different modes like that. I end up going up here, I pick up my shutter speed, I can pick up P, or I can come down here and pick up shutter, or aperture priority, and if I want aperture priority, it's just like we were expecting all our Macs, you can just slide it up and down and do the settings. Uh, it really is quite a nice little camera, it does video very nice, however there are some things that um, I don't like about it. It gets warm pretty quick, uh, it's limited because you have a couple hundred shots before the battery goes dead, it's a fixed lens. So it's kind of like the iPhone, it's a fixed lens. One nice thing is though that it can record the JPEGs you shoot onto the iPhone if you'd like to preview them without the camera or if you don't want any space taken up on your iPhone you can have all the images stored internally in this device like this. So it's a small device, can't say that it's the handiest device in the world but it's an interesting device. And you know, if you want to be taking pictures like this, it works fine. You can see there's a lot of wiggle. I'm not sure how well this would work without it uh, falling off, but it's a good start, and DxO makes a great product. The image quality is really super. Um, right now, it only works in the raw files with their DxO1 software, but I presume you'd find it quickly and sometime soon in both Capture One and uh, Adobe Camera Raw with Lightroom. So that's the uh, DxO1. When you're finished, you just kind of push it down, close it up, and it turns off, and we're done. So, anyway, this is my DX01 introduction. You can read more about it in the article that accompanies this video. And uh, thanks for visiting, and I'll see you on the Luminous Landscape.